Welcome to this Let's Talk Meshings tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature in just a couple of minutes. In this video, we demonstrate how to apply the available boundary conditions when creating extrusions in Pointwise. Over on the Boundary Conditions tab, the display of the connector changes to show the two boundaries of my connector in red. Display factor can vary between 0 and 1. A value of 0 will suppress play, while a value of 1 will maximize its influence. I'll change the display factor for the right boundary of the connector to a maximum value of 1 and click the Set Boundary Condition button to apply these changes. On the left boundary of the connector, I will change its boundary condition to have a constant XPC. Back on the Run tab, I'll run the extrusion for 20 steps and you can see the effect of the display boundary condition on the right while comparing that with the constant X boundary condition on the left. Returning to the Boundary Conditions tab, if I change the constant X boundary condition to a symmetry X BC, then the extrusion will result in a subtle difference in the grid lines. The symmetry boundary condition does a slightly better job than the constant boundary condition of making sure the grid lines approaching the boundary are normal to the marching direction. Next, there are three more boundary conditions which apply to extruding domains into blocks. As before, select a domain and return to the Extrusion panel for normal extrusions via the Create menu. On the Boundary Conditions tab, you can see that when extruding domains, you have the same splay, constant, and symmetry boundary conditions as are available for connectors. In addition, there are three others, Database Constrained, Adjacent Grid, and Floating. The Adjacent Grid Boundary Condition will use the existing grid spacing of an adjacent domain to advance the extrusion. Similarly, if I have a boundary adjacent to some database surface, then I can constrain the extrusion and have it follow the surface. Here, I've set the right boundary of my domain to adjacent grid, and the left boundary of my domain to database constrained. If I run the extrusion 20 steps, you can see how the extrusion has followed the database surface on the left, and on the right, it matched the existing grid spacing for the adjacent domain. The last boundary condition type is a floating boundary condition. A floating Y boundary condition constrains the X and Z marching directions while allowing the extrusion to float in the Y direction. Floating X and floating Z work similarly by constraining the extrusion in two of the three coordinate directions while letting the specified coordinate direction float. And that's all there is to applying extrusion boundary conditions in Pointwise. If you liked this video, then be sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments, then drop us a line down below or connect with us on Twitter using the link in this video's description. Thank you and have a pleasant Tuesday.